continuing on from our discussion of the Boltzmann factor and probabilities for different states for a system, uh, let's tr now try to calculate the average energy of a system if we know its uh, partition function. So uh, I just want to be clear about this ensemble that I keep talking about. Sometimes this is something which is uh, doesn't seem to have quite a clear definition or refers to something which people can't put in uh, very concrete terms. So one definition you might use for ensemble is just kind of the probability distribution for all the different states that a system could occupy. So there's all these different possible quantized energies you could have in your system and the ensemble represents kind of the probability distribution kind of how these how the system is spread out between these different possible states uh, at, a, at a given kind of equilibrium situation. Okay, so if we want to calculate the average value of a certain quantity, let's say we have A in these kind of curly or pointy brackets here, that would be the average value of property A. You might also refer to this as an expectation value if you're familiar with, with expectation values from quantum mechanics. And we have our set of probabilities, which are state probabilities. So PI is the probability that the system exists in state I with energy E I, E sub I. So if we want to calculate this expectation value and we know these probabilities, then this becomes a fairly straightforward calculation. And we just say that the expectation value or the average value of A is a sum over all of the states I of the probability of that state I times the value of that property A for state I. Okay, so now let's apply this to energies. So for a given energy, E, we're going to have the sum over all the states times the probability in state which might depend on number of particles, volume, and inverse temperature beta. Probability times the value of that property in the state, which is EI, depending on number of particles and volume. And then substituting in the value for energy for probability that we had from the previous video. We have sum over all states, EI and V, and then the probability E to the minus beta EI of NV divided by our partition function Q of NV beta. And remember a partition function being just a sum of all the unnormalized probabilities of all these Boltzmann factors here. Okay, so I'm going to write down that partition function in some more explicit terms here. Like I just said, it's the sum over all the states of the unnormalized Boltzmann factors e to the minus beta ei of nv. And now, given this expression here for the average energy, I'm going to look at a particular derivative of this partition function here. Particularly, I'm going to look at the partial derivative of the log, natural log of the partition function with respect to that inverse temperature beta. And let's remind ourselves that beta is just defined as 1 over the Boltzmann constant Kb times the Kelvin temperature T. Okay, so this doesn't make much sense right now what, where I'm uh, going with this, but we're just going to look at what the value of this uh, particular partial derivative ends up being and see how it compares to this expression right here. Okay, so that is going to be the partial derivative of the natural log of Q with respect to Q times the partial derivative of Q 
with respect to beta. I just took the chain rule there. You can see that that's true by the chain rule. You can multiply those two and that is true. The derivative of the natural log of q with respect to q is going to be 1 over q. And then we have the partial derivative of q with respect to beta left over. So now let's look at the partial derivative of q with respect to beta. That's going to be if we substitute in q, partial derivative with respect to beta of, don't really need the bracket there, the sum over all the states i e to the minus beta e i. And I'm going to drop the, the variable, follow, drop these kind of variable dependencies just for convenience from now on. Then we move on, we have that this continues to equal, well, derivative is a linear operator, so we can pull that to the inside of the sum. Then we have derivative with respect to beta of e to the minus beta ei. Then that is just going to be, um, we're going to pull out a minus ei from the chain rule there. And then this is going to remain untouched, e to the minus beta ei. Okay, so then we take that and we combine that with our 1 over q here. So what we're going to end up having is that the partial derivative of the natural log of q with respect to beta is going to equal our 1 over q times our partial derivative of q with respect to beta, which is minus ei. I'll just throw that up there, the minus out in front, sum of E i e to the minus beta e i. Now if I rearrange this a little bit, we'll see that that will be minus the sum of e i times e to the minus beta e i over q. Same thing that we just had before. And now you should notice that this expression here is the same as this expression here with the exception of a minus sign. So this is equal to the minus of the expectation value or the average value of the energy. So we can then conclude finally that the expectation value or our average energy average energy of a system is going to be minus the partial derivative of the natural log of the partition function with respect to inverse temperature beta. And while we're taking this partial derivative, we're assuming that we have a constant number of particles and volume there. So this is starting to show some of the power of the partition function, how all macroscopic properties of the system like energy and as we'll see like heat capacity or pressure or other quantities can be expressed in terms of certain manipulations of the partition function. So if you take the natural log of the partition function and then take the negative of that of its partial derivative with respect to beta, you will get this average energy here. And we'll have similar expressions for other quantities, which are going to prove very, very useful. So it is indeed that this true that this partition function gives us the entire state of the system. And once we know this, we can calculate any physical property of interest for our system.